Right, Mr. Palmer here. Uh, next video on databases. This one is about relational databases. Just making sure that you've got the basic terminology that you need for this down pat. Okay. So uh, the big question basically is what are relational databases? This is not going to talk, um, look at actually um, uh, entity relationship diagrams in much detail. Uh, that's in the next one. This one is focusing on the key language that you need to understand. So with a relational database, basically what we're saying is it's the opposite to flat files where you had a single table storing all the data. Here we're splitting up the data. It's stored across uh, different, ta different tables. Uh, the tables are storing data about single entities and relationships exist between the entities. An entity basically is a real world thing that can be modeled through the data that represents it. This is the only time you will hear me use the word thing to describe something, okay? Uh, it's a very woolly uh, concept that's uh, difficult to explain. So these are examples of entities. For example, car would be an entity, and we model through the data. For example, the VIN, vehicle identity number, identification number, the mate, the model, agent size, etc., etc. Dealer would be the company name, the VAT number, the address, the telephone number, then offers. So you can see car and dealer are concrete, tangible things that we see. Uh, you can touch, feel, whatever it is, okay? Sometimes an entity might be something that's abstract, but still something that exists and it can be modeled through the data that represents it because an offer can be represented by the discount, the start date, the end date, the products that it applies to, etc. Okay? So uh, this was a familiar um, screenshot maybe for you looking at Microsoft Access here. Uh, this was from a couple of videos back. It talks about tables, fields, and records, okay? So table is the collection of data. Uh, a record is the a data about one particular um, uh, person, for example. And then a field is the uh, individual bits of data that make up the table, okay, or make up a record. Some people would define a field as the, the column heading, okay. Well, another name for a, uh, well, another name for a table is a relation, okay. And it can be defined as a set of tuples where each attribute or an element is a member of the same domain. Okay, we say D little j is a member of the domain D big J. All right, that's uh, I think boy sort of I forget who it is. It's definition. All right. So the next question you can ask me is what is a tuple? All right. So a tuple is a unique set of attribute values. You're like, huh? What does that mean? Well, if we look at the same screenshot again, but we can say a relation is the table, okay? The attributes are the items of data that make up the table, and therefore a tuple being a unique um, combination of attributes, so a tuple is a row within the table, all right? So a tuple is a row in a relational database, a row in a table in a relation in a relational database, okay? So same screenshot, slightly different names okay you should be able to relate relation attribute table uh, tuple to table fields and records so primary keys if you remember back are the fields that uniquely identify each row in the table so here we have a, a key they're the id field um, and that is used to uniquely identify um, each member of this, I think this was a, like a youth club database that I made for a lesson some, some couple of years back. All right. Um, for those of you who are really being nerdy about this, the ID field is actually what we call a surrogate key because it's an artificial key that we've created to represent each person. A natural key would be something like the telephone number because the tele each person has a unique telephone number. All right. So moving on. All right. Sometimes more than one field may be unique. Okay. So actually you have candidate keys which are all of the unique fields in a, in a relation and the secondary keys are the unique fields in a database table which have been which have not been selected as a primary key okay so for example uh, this could be a database table where we're storing data about the employees so we've got the uh, employee ID first name surname telephone number national insurance number passport number out of that there are actually three other fields uh, there are sorry there are a number of fields that are unique because the employee ID the telephone number, the national insurance number, the passport number, they're all unique. Everyone has different uh, telephone numbers, national insurance, passport numbers. Okay. Um, so the candidate keys could be those four fields out of which we choose one as the primary key. So the employee ID, we've made the primary key. 
So therefore the secondary keys would be the telephone number, national insurance number and the passport number. Now, following on from that, okay, uh, you may remember that we talked about index. For example, we have index sequential records. So we got, we, you know, those fast searches for specific data. You know, you've got millions of records in a database table. You want to find something quite quickly. You don't want to start at the beginning of the file and search all the way down. You want to jump to a certain block in that uh, data, in that file and then start searching through those individual blocks. However, uh, oh, let's, let's do a, a quick demo of that just to so you can visualize it so if that is my a database a part of a table where I've got the surname uh, field you can see the index might look something like this because then uh, if I want to search for somebody whose surname begins with B then I would, the, the, I would look in the index I'd jump to that position in the file and I'd have to search each individual record there same thing if I'm looking for someone whose surname started with F I quickly jump down my index find F jump into the table and then start searching from there. Okay, so it should speed up the process with which you search. Okay, uh, just to think about with indexes though, they do need to be updated regularly, okay, because they point to the beginning of a block of records. So for example, my original uh, table where I uh, want to insert the name Edmondson into there, well basically I'd have to update my um, index if I insert that record because if I don't update the index, then it's going to be inaccurate for a number of records. So it's actually not going to speed up the search. Okay. Now, um, uh, with relational databases, I'm just going to show that my uh, my three bullet point definition um, from earlier. So data stored in tables, tables storing data about single entities, and the relationships that exist in between those entities. All right. So here's an example relational database. Okay. There are uh, five tables customers, orders, order items, products, suppliers. Okay, each of those tables has a primary key. All right, uh, now in other tables, there's also a foreign key. Okay, and the foreign key in, for example, the orders table is the customer ID, because it will link an order to a customer. So I don't need to have the company name and the company telephone number stored in the orders table. Okay, so I'm, not, I'm now removing all that duplicate data. So you can see this immediately overcomes a problem that I showed with flat files in the previous video, where um, you know you've got the same data in multiple tables. So where do you change it? In this case, all I ever need to do is to, if the company changes the telephone number, change it in the customer's table, and any order that I search up, I will be able to find the the most up to date relevant telephone number for that order. Okay, so uh, you can remember the primary key was a field that uniquely identified each row in the table or each tuple. Um, so you, you can see from that diagram the, the primary keys in bold. However, sometimes you have what we call compound keys and composite keys. So compound keys where you combine two attributes that uniquely identify an entity. So the order items table, you can see that we have orders and then we have products. And every order will be made up of ordered items. So in order to uniquely identify each order item, I've got a separate table where I can have a, comp a compound key of the order ID and the product ID. Okay, those two two things together uh, would make a unique row in that table. So order five might have product six. Order five might also have product seventeen. And those two things together make unique rows in that table. Okay, as a compound key. A composite key is where you uh, combine attributes again. So you've got two or more uh, fields together in combination but one of those fields might not be unique, okay? But however, when you still combine them, you create a unique combination. So an example of that uh, would be, you can see there on the bottom right-hand side, if I had a music uh, database where I have my CDs, uh, records all catalogued in it, uh, each album album might uh, be have a unique ID, but the tracks are not unique because every the albums would be like track one, track two, track three, track four. But I want to store data about those tracks. So in my tracks table, by combining the album ID and the track number, I will then get a unique row in the table, which I can then add uh, other 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 attributes to, for example, track title, duration, etc., etc. Okay. So there's a, a lot of language there, which has been introduced to you. In the next video, I'll be going uh, over in a bit more detail about um, the advantages of relational databases and entity relationship diagrams.